Hey there again, Booktube, and welcome to my channel, Lola here. Today I'm just going to talk to you generally about Harry Potter. I'm rereading the series at the moment and I'm absolutely loving doing so. I'm on um, the Half-Blood Prince again right now and it's fabulous and I'm really enjoying it. But I just want to talk to you about the things I'd be reminded of because it's just wow compared to the movies. I mean, I've watched the movies again at one point and I'm now I'm reading the books and I'm like, there's no, no comparison. I love the movies and I love the books, but wow, the books are so much better. Um, as I said in a previous video, I think, you see so much more of Umbridge in Order of the Phoenix in the books. And you see how horrific she really is and the way she punishes people, the way she speaks to people, and then she expects them to have respect for her. Um, also, Peeves. <laughs> how can the movie not have Peeves in it? It wouldn't take that much more. Just to put Peeves in it and just have him messing around and causing havoc in the school. I don't know how they could possibly do without Peeves. He's just such an integral character to me, to many people, and he's just funny. It makes it lively and happy. Even in the half of Friends when it's really miserable, so Peeves appears and he's like causing all this havoc and it makes you laugh. But um, I'm reading the half of Friends at the moment and I'm just like, what's going on? These things aren't in the movie. Um, Lavender Brown, who's with Ron at the moment, you see some of her in the movie. Obviously you see her with the love potion and all this kind of thing. But in the books it really explains how they're like, face locked together all the time and how Ron and Hermione are so jealous of each other. And the movie doesn't show that as much. It shows that they're jealous of each other a little bit, but it really, really emphasizes it in the books. And like Hermione and Ron are really trying to make each other jealous and it's just really really funny and Harry's just stuck in the middle like what do I do guys I don't know what I'm doing you're you're making each other jealous and you're my best friends and I feel really bad for him also <laughs> when Harry starts fancying Ginny I'm a bit like this is creepy um because Ginny fancied Harry in the first two or three books and then she gave up on him I know everybody talks about Jenny being a stalker who ends up getting the guy she stalks but she's like a little fangirl in the beginning and she's like oh I don't know you you're really interesting and then she gets to know him <laughs> and then she's like well he isn't interested in me so I'm just gonna go with these other guys and then <laughs> Ron gets really angry at her for going out with people because he's a little because she's his little sister and he's like you're not allowed to kiss boys stop doing that um but yeah and then in half blood prince i'm reading along and then it's all of a sudden like i think i like Ginny, and Ginny's like da la la i'm going to go kiss dean now <laughs> and i don't understand why everybody's like Ginny's a stalker and then she gets harry and then just read the books and you'll find out that Alison's actually true in a way because she's just a fangirl in the beginning and then she gets to know him and she just she doesn't really care as much anymore she still likes Harry obviously because she ends up with him but she doesn't stalk him she's just friends with him she you know Harry's her big brother's best friend so she calms down a lot and then Harry gets really jealous and he doesn't know why and he's trying to tell himself that he just feels like a big brother to her because he spends a lot of time with Ron and it's Ron's little sister and all this kind of thing. But I think eventually he just gets it and he's like, okay I like Ginny but I don't know how Ron's gonna take this. Oh god what do I do? But this is just like obviously a teenage boy with all the hormones ever. He doesn't know how to treat women as well, at all as you see with Cho Chang because he makes her cry all the time. If you've read the books you will know this. But in the movie it's just like oh I'm gonna kiss you now and then you don't see him with Cho Chang ever again. Barely. But you read the books and every time they meet she's crying and he's like why are you crying? I don't understand girls and then Hermione's like Harry, for goodness sake, you're supposed to do this, she's still upset about this, that and the other. Her ex-boyfriend has just died. What are you doing, Harry? And Hermione's like, be more sensitive, Harry. <laughs> and yeah, Harry just does not have a clue how to treat girls unless they're his friends. <laughs> uh, girlfriends with Harry is not good when he's a teenager. The only time he actually gets anywhere is with Ginny, I think, and that's why it stays. they stay together. <laughs> but yeah. Um, 
you just see so much in the books that you don't see in the movies like this and it makes you laugh and it makes you think like Harry what are you doing with your life just just ah and like he wants to be an aura he gives up a lot to not do that if you know what I mean like he gets a exceeds expectations and potions and he doesn't even try to go ahead and take it I know Snape said he wouldn't take him in if he didn't go in outstanding but at the same time he could have at least tried and then if he couldn't have gone into something else but then obviously he gets into it so it's okay <laughs> and then there's the whole thing about the slug club with Professor Slughorn um, coming into the school and teaching potions now I don't think it's portrayed enough in the movie I know there's a lot more important things but in the book it just makes it light out and funny again and they, in the movies they seem to take that kind of thing away and they just get darker and darker the books get darker and darker, but there's still those things that make it funny and light-hearted, like the Slug Club. Um, you do see it in the movie, but not to the extent that they show it in the book. And they go to the Christmas party, this is a bit that I've actually just read in the book, and they go to a Christmas party, and you don't actually see Draco trying to break into it, and Snape having a word with him about it, and all that kind of thing in the movie, as far as I know. And then how loopy Luna is because oh Luna's one of my favourite characters guys but like she starts talking about all this rubbish and the quibbler again and <laughs> Professor Trelawney is really interested in that for some reason but obviously Luna and Professor Trelawney are both a bit funny so you know <laughs> but yeah Snape is still as serious as ever Dumbledore's giving Harry lessons now in um, basically the way Voldemort was brought up as Tom Riddle and him coming to Hogwarts is to fly. You do see that in the movies, which is really good, but not to the extent, obviously, again, in the books, where you see um, Voldemort's mother and father and um, grandparents and everything, like you do in the books. So that's really interesting to see, and it builds up the world around how Voldemort came into the world and who his family were before, and how he is not a pure of himself. So it's really, really interesting. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my general Harry Potter chat and how the movie doesn't compare to the books, so well done there. Um, thank you very much for watching, please hit that thumbs up, please subscribe and comment below all your views and what you think should have been in the Harry Potter movies because they're important, like peeves. <laughs> thank you for watching, see you soon, bye bye!